Hello and welcome to the second video of section 3.3 on how the second derivative affects the shape of the graph. In the previous video, we used the first derivative to locate and identify local extrema using the first derivative test. And we used the increasing-decreasing test to find intervals on which the function was increasing or decreasing. In this second video, we are interested in what the second derivative of f double prime can tell us about the function f. As the second derivative f double prime is the derivative of the first derivative f prime, using the increasing decreasing test, if the second derivative is positive, then the first derivative is increasing. If the second derivative is negative, then the first derivative is decreasing. Like with the first derivative, you can see in the shape of the graph whether the second derivative is positive or negative. An interval has upward concavity if the function lies above the tangent lines of points on that interval. An interval has downward concavity if the function is below the tangent lines of points on that interval. The parabola y equals x squared is concave upwards on the entire real line. Notice how it lies above the tangent line no matter what point we choose. While the red function is concave down on the interval negative infinity to zero, and concave up on the interval 0 to infinity. Notice how the red function lies below the tangent lines on the interval negative infinity to 0, while the red function lies above the tangent lines on the interval 0 to infinity. A useful way to identify concavity is by quartering a circle horizontally and vertically. Quadrant 1 is decreasing and concave down, and quadrant 2 is increasing and concave down, and quadrant 3 is decreasing and concave up. And finally, quadrant 4 is increasing and concave up. With these four arrangements in mind, one can estimate whether the first or second derivative of a function is positive or negative, just by looking at the graph. To find intervals which are concave up and intervals which are concave down, we divide the domain of a function f into intervals whose endpoints are critical numbers of the first derivative. That is, those x values c in the domain, which make the second derivative zero, or for which the second derivative does not exist. Points whose x values are local maximum or local minimum on the graph of the first derivative are called inflection points. These are the values at which concavity changes from negative to positive, or positive to negative. Let's take the example of the function, the cubed root of x times 8 minus x. We'll find the inflection points in intervals which are concave up or concave down. Taking the first derivative using the product rule, we simplify by factoring. Notice that each term in the sum has a part x. We'll factor the lowest exponent, and we clear the denominator by factoring the fraction 1 3rd. We now have a nice simplified first derivative. But we want to test for concavity, so we need the second derivative. We now take the derivative of the first derivative using the product rule. We simplify by factoring. Notice that each term in the sum has an x. We'll factor the lowest exponent, and we clear the denominator by factoring the fraction negative 2 ninths. We now have a nice simplified second derivative. We divide the domain of the original function f into intervals whose endpoints are the x values for which the second derivative is 0 or does not exist. The function f has the entire real line as a domain, and the x values which make the second derivative 0 is x equals negative 4 while the x value which makes the second derivative not exist is 0. We use the test points of negative 5, negative 1, and 1, plugging them into the second derivative. We see that the interval negative 4 to 0 is concave up, while the interval negative infinity to negative 4 and 0 to infinity is concave down. Since concavity changes from negative to positive at x equals negative 4, and positive to negative at x equals 0, the points negative 4, 4 cubed root of negative 4, and 0, 8 are inflection points of f. 
A final application of the second derivative to the shape of a graph is the second derivative test. If the second derivative is continuous about a point c, and c makes the first derivative zero, and the second derivative is positive, then c is a local minimum of f. Draw how you typically imagine a local minimum. The function decreases and then increases again with a smooth transition from positive to negative. No cusps or corners, and the point c has a horizontal tangent. Notice that the function is always above the tangent line at points bordering c. That means that the interval about c is concave upwards. This is the observation of the second derivative test. A point with the horizontal tangent, which is concave upwards, is a local minimum. In the same way, we see that a point with the horizontal tangent, which is concave downwards, is a local maximum. Returning now to our previous example, we cannot use the second derivative test on the point x equals 0, as that is the only point of discontinuity for the second derivative. The first derivative is 0, exactly at x equals 2. Don't be fooled into thinking that x equals 0 is a root for f prime. x has a negative exponent, so when x is 0, the function is undefined. Notice that the second derivative is negative when x equals 2. So by the second derivative test, x equals 2 is a local maximum of the function f. Let us conclude this video by using the techniques from the first video of the section on the function f. The second derivative is not needed for techniques from the first video. We can determine which intervals are increasing and decreasing on the function f by taking the critical number x equals 2, where the first derivative is 0, and the critical number x equals 0, where the first derivative does not exist, and dividing the domain of the function f into intervals with endpoints 0 and 2. We take the test points 3, 1, and negative 1 to determine if f prime is positive or negative on the interval. We find that the function f is increasing on the interval negative infinity to 0, negative infinity to zero and 0 to 2, while it is decreasing on the interval 2 to infinity. As the function f is going from increasing to decreasing at the x value 2, 2 is a local maximum. But for the value x equals 0, the function is going from increasing to increasing, so x equals 0 is not a local extrema of the function. To summarize, using the first derivative, we can determine which intervals are increasing and which intervals are decreasing on the domain of a function. Using the second derivative, we can determine which intervals are concave upwards and which are concave downwards on the domain of a function. We can use either the first or the second derivative test to help us find local extrema.